There's a growing number of brands and creators that are significantly expanding the reach of their YouTube videos and growing a much larger audience in the process. Creators and brands like Mr. Beast, like Nastia, Coco Melon, Kids Diana Show, Ikea, Samsung, Amazon, VidIQ, and Gary V, and so many more. How are they doing it? By making their content available to people who have the problem that their brand and channel solve, but in other languages. In this video, we're gonna talk about how they've done it and give you some different options that are available for you to execute the strategy for yourself. I'm Sonia Thompson and I help brands grow a bigger, more diverse and fiercely loyal customer base. Now let's talk about results some of these brands have had with this strategy. Mr. Beast Manager attributes one of the primary factors contributing to his rapid growth from 100 million to 200 million subscribers to making his content available in 15 languages. The Like Nasia channel has more than 113 million subscribers on her English language channel, but the team has added more than 82 million additional subscribers by making that same content available in other languages. And the Kids Diana Show has 119 million subscribers on the English language channel. The team over there has added more than 72 million additional subscribers by making the same content available and you guessed it, other languages. Now this approach works for business brands too. VidIQ has 1.78 million subscribers on their main channel in English and they've added an additional 350,000 subscribers with their Spanish language channel. So how are these brands going about making their content available in other languages? All the brands that I mentioned earlier are doing it through professional human dubbing, where a voiceover actor says the translated script using the same energy, tone, and inflections of the original audio. Let's look at an example of a dubbed video from vidIQ. First, have a look at the original in English. Hello, I'm Rob and welcome to vidIQ, the YouTube tool and channel that educates you on your YouTube journey. For more content just like this, make sure to subscribe to the channel and do this so that you're the first to be notified when there are new videos released. And now here's the professionally dubbed version using a human voiceover artist. Hola, soy Rob, bienvenidos a vidIQ, la herramienta y el canal de YouTube que te educará a ti en tu viaje por YouTube. Para obtener más contenido como este, suscríbete al canal y haz esto para recibir una notificación cuando se publiquen nuevos videos. So what does a Spanish speaking consumer think about this dubbed content? I asked my favorite Spanish speaker, my husband Jonathan, what his opinion was. Here's what he had to say. Este lo vi bien sincronizado. Mm -hmm. Le vi bien la estaba viendo en la boca a ver si lo que decía iba bien a los tiempos y iba bien. Okay, so human dubbing is consumer approved from a customer experience standpoint. Benefits of human dubbing are that you often get a very high quality and accurate result, which is great when you're thinking about maintaining your brand standard and delivering a customer experience that makes the people you're serving feel like they belong with you. Some of the downsides of this option is with the time and investment associated with doing so. Because you're working with both translation professionals and voiceover artists to ensure the content is accurately localized and that the voiceover is synchronized well. Now, another option that gives you faster turnaround and lower costs are AI dubbing tools, which there are a growing number of those that are available these days. So basically you take a video you've already created, drop it into one of these AI tools, select your preferences with regards to the voiceover that you wanna use for the dub, and out pops the translated dubbed video. Now, I tested this out with a video that I already had on my YouTube channel. Now here's a quick snippet of that original version in English. Yesterday's customers are not today's customers. In the US in particular, there have been a number of changes in the population from a demographic standpoint. This is important to you because your customers' demographics influence their psychographics and their behaviors. It influences how they perceive and how they view the world. And of course, it impacts how they will receive and respond to, or not, the messages that you deliver to them. Now, before I show you the AI dubbed version of that video, 
video, I do want to highlight one thing. Now, almost all of these AI tools allow you to edit the translation from the original audio that you've given them. I took their AI translated version and sent it to my translation team to verify for accuracy and to make corrections based upon my brand voice and style. So this AI dubbed version reflects the changes made from my Spanish language translation team. I always recommend that you verify any AI translation with people who actually speak the language that you're translating to, preferably professionals. Los clientes de ayer no son los clientes de hoy. En Estados Unidos en particular, se produjeron una serie de cambios poblacionales. Desde un punto de vista demográfico, este factor es importante para tu negocio porque la demografía del cliente incide en su psicografía y sus conducta. Influye en la forma en que percibe y ve el mundo y ve el mundo y obviamente impacta en la manera en que recibirá y responderá o no a los mensajes que les envías. De modo que hoy proponemos explicarte cómo están cambiando tus clientes. And here's what Jonathan had to say about the AI version of this dub. Okay, one thing to note. To give you more of a flavor of the job these AI tools do with the dubbing, I put Jonathan's response to my video into the AI dubbing tool. So what you're about to see is the AI dub version of what he had to say from Spanish to English. Uh, it's good. Really? Yes, yes, it looks good. Does the language seem odd? No, the audio is fine. The voice, it has, there's a part where it was done very quickly. Towards the end, it was spoken too fast, but then the audio was fine. It's clearly understood like a good dub. Yes, as if it were well dubbed. Overall, he liked it. And as you heard, it seemed like a good dub. He did, however, have some criticisms. Now, before we get to his thoughts, I do have one criticism to add as well. I selected that I wanted a feminine sounding voiceover whenever it was me talking in the video. And what you'll hear in the video for the dub version whenever it's me talking, in my opinion, doesn't sound so feminine. Okay, so here are AI Jonathan's thoughts. The audio isn't perfectly synced with the mouth when you speak because they are snippets of videos that it grabs. They are different, but it was fine. One part sped up at the end, but apart from that, it was fine. The audio was fine. And the translation? The translation was good. Okay, so the AI dubbing is an option, but with some caveats. It's important to verify the translation. Also, with the programs that exist now, there may be some synchronization and funky voiceover things that you might need to play around with to get them to your liking. So there's still some work to be done to get these AI dub videos ready to be published. Another option to consider if you want to make your video content accessible to people who speak other languages, aside from professional human dubbing and aside from AI dubbing, it's an approach you've already seen in this video. Subtitling. Subtitling is basically when you hear the audio in its original language, and then there's the written version of the original audio in the end user's preferred language. And generally, you'll see that at the bottom of the screen. Now, here's Jonathan talking about his perspective of the differences between professional human dubbing, AI dubbing, and subtitling. And you'll see this clip with subtitles. Eh, ¿Cómo es por vos si estás como en YouTube mirando algo como si te molesta que no estás sincronizada? Eh, con la boca cuando habla, eh, no, no, no tendría que haber mucho delay. Porque es como que cuando ves una película... <coughs> Y el audio está desfasado. Sí. Es un poco molesto. Sí. Por, por la acción de, la, de lo que viene en el video y el audio está más adelantado, más atrasado. Sí. No se puede ver. Es, no. No, no es cómodo verlo así. Tiene que estar bien. Sí. Pero como <coughs> esto, como un video en YouTube, eh, ¿te molesta un poco o prefieres a escuchar en inglés y leer en español abajo? Eh, Depende, depende, porque depende de lo que estás haciendo. Ah. O sea, si estás escuchando un audio solamente y no tienes tiempo para estar mirando, eh, está bueno escucharlo en español. Sí. Ahora, si estás 
tenés el tiempo para sentarte a mirar un video, ¿no? sí. eh, por ahí quieres ver, escuchar el audio original con el subtítulo. Sí. Porque tal vez, tal vez uno interpreta que el subtítulo es más preciso sí. a, la, a, a lo que estás diciendo. Sí. Y el, cuando uno lo hace doblado, es como que traduce o quiso decir algo. Sí. O sea, no es, es como no es el original. Sí. ¿Entendés? Sí. Es, es por eso. Pero, pero estaba bien. The pros of subtitling is that it can be cost effective because you really need to focus most of your energy on getting a very good translation. And there are less steps in the process because you don't have to worry about dubbing and all the synchronization issues that come with that. However, because subtitling requires the end user to be reading, they can't be doing other things while watching your video or else they'll miss it. So that's something to keep in mind. Okay, so the final verdict from Jonathan, the Spanish speaking consumer, was that human dub video was the highest quality and he noticed a very clear difference between the human dub videos and the AI dub videos. That did not mean that the AI dub videos and subtitled videos weren't viable options. Como un cliente vos siente como cuando están traduciendo pero yo sé que es como artificial, inteligencia y no está sincronizado. ¿O es, estás feliz que están haciendo? Eh, está, bi está bien. Peor, peor es no tenerlo. ¿Entendés? O sea, es preferible tener algo y poder tener la información y el, a no tenerlo directamente sí. en, en español. Sí. Después de la parte de la sincronización es un detalle. Sí. No es tan importante. Sí. O sea, lo importante es la información. At the end of the day, the most important thing for him was that the brand makes its content available in Spanish, no matter which format is used. Professional dubbing with humans, AI dubbing, or subtitles. He, like a lot of other consumers, want access to your information. So which format should you choose? It depends. It depends on your customers and what they prefer. It depends on your resources. And it also depends on your preferences, specifically as it relates to the kind of customer experience you want to deliver to the people that you serve. And that's the most important takeaway from this video. People who speak other languages want to consume your content and be your customer. Give them the information they need to do so in their local language. In the comments below, let me know which option you prefer and which one you'll start applying for your brand. Talk soon.